Hello, welcome learners. Today we are going to talk about place of Hindi in India. It is part of course number 503B, unit 2. First of all, we will talk about the adoption of Hindi as official language in India. You know that language is a very important aspect for any nation. The very concept of nation state is sometimes identified with one language which is considered to be the most important or sometimes called the national language of India. But India is a multilingual country, here several languages are spoken and so in our societies language becomes an issue even more important than many other nations of the world which are monolingual. If you go to other countries of the world, many of them have only one language. But in the Indian context, we have many languages and hence in this multilingual scenario, the place of Hindi and its importance in our curricular as well as educational institution becomes an important aspect to understand and to study and to train our children for future. Apart from Hindi, as you know, there are 21 other scheduled languages in India, which means that in the schedule 8 of the constitution, you know that the schedule 8 of the constitution lists the languages which are considered to be the official languages in India. So, in that schedule 8 of our constitution, apart from Hindi, there are 21 other scheduled languages. Hindi was adopted on 14th September 1949 by the constituent committee as the official languages of India. This is the official language of India since that date. Of course, along with this, English was also accepted as the co-official language. But in this context, we should first understand how the constitution makers defined Hindi. According to article 343 of the constitution of India, Hindi written in Devanagari script, see pay attention, Hindi written in a particular script which is attached with the Hindi nowadays very generally, but they defined it very clearly that it should be written in the Devanagari script. Now that Hindi which is written in the Devanagari script is the official language of India and English is its associate official language. We will not talk here more about English because here we are talking about the place of Hindi in India. Apart from being one of the official languages of the central government, Hindi is the official language in many other states also like Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Bihar, Rajasthan, Haryana, Himachal Pradesh and Delhi. In Gujarat, you see there is a situation where Gujarati and Hindi both are considered to be the official languages. Now this situation exists or rather to say similar situations exist in other states also like for example, in Delhi apart from Hindi, Punjabi and Urdu are considered to be the official languages. Similar in Uttar Pradesh, Urdu is considered as another official language. So you can see that in some states along with Hindi, there are other languages accepted as the official language of that particular state. But mainly where Hindi is considered to be the official language, we have to understand that apart from these states, there are central government territories there which are called often union territories. They are also we accept Hindi as the first and the foremost language for official purposes. For example, union territories like Chandigarh, Andaman and Nicobar, Daman and Diu, which are centrally administered, Hindi is used as the official language along with of course English as I had told you that for the, for the central government offices, Hindi is the official language and English is its associate official language. So, in all these union territories like Chandigarh, Andaman and Nicobar, Daman and Diu, Along with Hindi, English is the associate official language, but Hindi remains the main official language. However, in the centrally administered territory of Puducherry, also known as sometimes in English as Pondicherry, which is its older name, now it is known as Puducherry, Tamil is the official language and not Hindi. So that means that along with English, Tamil is the official language and English remains its 
associate official language. Note that Hindi is the official language and not the national language. In the beginning, I told you that every nation and every society nowadays in every nation state, there has to be one national language normally. But in our context, India, in India, Hindi is the official language and not the national language. In fact, our constitution is silent on the issue of existence of national language of India. That means we do not have very clearly defined any national language. There are today along with Hindi other 21 official languages listed in the schedule 8 of the constitution, but there is no status given to any language as the national language of India. However, according to the article 351 of the constitution, union that means the central government, union must promote the spread of Hindi and develop Hindi as the medium of expression. Now, pay attention to the use of the word must. So, it is the obligatory duty on the central government, the union government that Hindi should be promoted, situations should be made in for promotion of Hindi and development of Hindi as a medium of expression. Now here, what do we understand by medium of expression? Expression is possible only when there are listeners. I can talk only when you are listening to me. Otherwise, this talk has no meaning. So in that context, you have to understand that it is not only a medium of expression, but it becomes actually just by saying that it is, it should be developed and promoted as a medium of expression, it simply implies that Hindi should be promoted as the language of communication by the union government within its territory. That means that Hindi should be promoted and developed gradually as the medium of communication among people of India. Since Hindi is to be promoted as the official language as well as the language of communication in India, it coexists with other languages of India. Now, the promotion of Hindi for the purposes of communication does not mean that the other languages are to be obliterated. Hindi has to coexist with other languages of India. So, when we say that there is no national language but the official language, perhaps our constitution makers, our forefathers envisaged a situation where Hindi along with other regional languages and other important languages which remain very important heritage for all of us because every language is a very important repertoire, source of knowledge. So, perhaps they envisaged that along with Hindi, the other languages also should coexist. This explains the coexistence of 21 other languages in the Schedule 8 of India. Initially in 1949, there were only 14 languages in the Schedule 8. But gradually, as the situations demanded, few more languages were added. For example, Konkani was added later on, recently Maithili has been added and there is always a possibility of adding more languages by constitutional amendments whenever the parliament considers it fit. So, more languages can also be added. It depends upon the requirement of that particular situation. However, all the languages, all the other languages listed in the Schedule 8 and otherwise also those which are not listed in the Schedule 8 should be coexisting with Hindi because Hindi should be promoted as I had shown you earlier that Hindi should be promoted as the language of expression which means the language of communication basically the link language and also the official language in which people of India in general could work. Now, Hindi, we have to understand that Hindi as spoken in Hind or India is that language which we are talking today. It has many forms. Its older names in the British times seven, from 18th century onwards, we find these two names at least Hindui and Hindvi. These names are written in various documents of those days, whether in French or in English. I have talked of French and English mainly because those days we have these uh, documents written e either in French or in English because a lot of territory in India was administered by French and a lot of other territories was administered by the East, the then East India Company. 
Hindi has many other forms also, out of which a very dominant form is known as the Khadi Boli Hindi. Khadi Boli Hindi is considered to be the precursor of the standard form of Hindi as we speak today. Khadi Boli is primarily spoken in the region of Delhi, Agra and Meerut. Now in this region, Hindi is spoken even today and that form is often taken as the standard form of Hindi. In this form, literature is also written which means that in Khadi Boli also, literature was produced. The other form of Hindi which is purely literary Hindi is known as Nagari Hindi. Now this form of Hindi is mostly used to write literature in Hindi since 18th, 19th century. From 19th century onwards, you find many novels, many poems, etc. are being written, have been written in Hindi. Now that Hindi which was very official kind of Hindi, a very literary kind of Hindi is given the name Nagari Hindi. You understand the word Nagari that means Nagar, that means those who live in a city which means that those who are considered to be the elites, which who are considered to be the civilized people, the most cultured people, that kind of Hindi which they are using for literary purposes. Now that Hindi is called Nagari Hindi in which literature was produced along with Khadi Boli, which was the language of the day to do communication in a particular region, we understand that there is a literary Hindi also and the name given to that literary Hindi is Nagari Hindi. Then there is another form of Hindi which is Hindustani. Often the colloquial Hindi using words from both Hindi and Urdu. Now here by Urdu means the words which come from Arabic and Persian origins as they are used in Urdu. They are also accepted in this form of Hindi that is called Hindustani. Now when I say the standard form of a language after having understood these three forms the Khadi Boli Hindi, the Nagari Hindi and Hindustani Hindi. Let me come back again to the notion of the standard form of language because I had told you that Khadi Boli is often considered to be the standard form of Hindi or at least the closest precursor of the standard of form of Hindi as we speak today. So what do we mean by the standard form of Hindi or a standard form of any language in fact? So when out of the many spoken dialects, out of the many spoken varieties of a language, one form which comes to be spoken by the educated and the elite sections of society, that form of language acquires the status of a standard language or that standard form of that particular language. Now in the context of Hindi, I, I have just discussed that often the standard form is that Hindi, that variety of Hindi which is spoken in Meerut, Delhi and Agra regions. Now in this case, the standard variety is not defined on the basis of the language spoken by the elites, but it is based on the geographical demarcation and the notion of Khari Boli being the precursor of the accepted standard form of Hindi. There are main four dialectal variation in Hindi. By dialect here we understand the variation in a language with geographical differences. For example, Hindi as being spoken in various parts of India, Hindi as spoken in Bihar and as spoken in Haryana and the variations that we notice there, these will be considered the dialectal variations of Hindi. However, in this context, we understand the various languages also which have actually been older than Hindi in many cases. They all contribute to Hindi and they are considered to be the dialects of Hindi. Now in this we will talk about various languages but first let us classify these dialects of Hindi which are sometimes languages also in their own right. In a broad four categories, the first category is Eastern Hindi. The second category would be Western Hindi, the third would be Rajasthani Hindi and the fourth would be Pahadi Hindi. Let us take them one by one and understand what all falls in first of all let us say Eastern Hindi. 
Now, Eastern Hindi has two main forms, two main varieties, two main dialectal variations. One is Eastern Hindi in general, we can say, and the other is Bihari Hindi. So, both of them come within the broad category of Eastern Hindi. Eastern Hindi includes Avadhi, Bagheli, and Chhattisgadhi. Now, Bihari Hindi includes mainly Bhojpuri, Maghi, and Maithili. Now, note here that on Maithili, there may be debate because it is now a part of the Schedule 8 of the Constitution and hence may be considered as a separate entity, which is true maybe also for some other languages. For example, Avadhi, as I said, Avadhi, Bagheli, and Chhattisgadhi are considered to be the Eastern form of Hindi, but Avdi also has a rich language heritage and they also may be considered as a language and in fact all of them are languages linguistically if you speak, they all are languages within their own rights. However, in the context of Hindi, all these contribute to the literature as well as the word formation processes and also the overall communication processes of what we consider today the standard form of Hindi. Hence, they, their literature, their communication processes, their regional variations, their regional flavor, they all contribute to Hindi and so they all form various varieties of Hindi and as I said Hindi and its forms, they are all make the forms, various forms and various varieties of Hindi. So, Bihari Hindi includes Bhojpuri, Maghi and Maithili, sometimes you may include, you may not include. Then the next form is Western Hindi. Now, there are two main variations in this form of Hindi based on the pronunciation. These are some uses of vowels while speaking and that makes a distinction. Now, first form is Akar Bahul where A is used mostly. Now, this form is mainly Korvi, Haryanvi and Dakkani. Now, pay attention here that Korvi and Korbi, it, it can be alternatively called Korvi or Korbi, Va and Ba can interchange. So, Korvi and Korbi is spoken in the area where Khadi Boli is spoken, mostly in western Uttar Pradesh, nearby regions of Haryana and such other places, basically Delhi, Meerut, Agra region and nearby places. So, there is a language overlap situation that sometimes they are considered just two names for the same form of Hindi, Korvi, Korbi, which exist along with Khadi Boli and this variation can also be described in the context of different social classes using the language. Khadi Boli may be the language form spoken by the upper classes and Korvi and Korbi by relatively lower economic groups. So, you find that Korbi is spoken in the area where Khadi Boli is spoken. Hence, the, these two forms of Hindi overlap in terms of its geographical demarcation. But within a particular geographical demarcation, also there is a possibility of dialectal variations which depends upon the socio-lectal, that the, how different social classes use language. The other form, next form is Haryanavi in this group. So, Haryanavi is spoken in Haryana and the neighboring regions in the adjoining states of India like Delhi and UP. In Delhi also you may find people who speak almost like Haryanavi. There are villages in Delhi, there are villages in nearby regions of Uttar Pradesh and Haryana on the border areas on both sides of Haryana and Uttar Pradesh. You may find people speaking almost the Haryanavi which is identified today as Haryanavi language. Sometimes even literature or folk songs are produced in these languages. Now, this means that there are areas which overlap in terms of dialectical diversity of Hindi. This is normal. This is very normal and it happens in most of the languages because it is very difficult to demarcate also that exactly at this point one form of language ends and from this point, geographical point, the other form of language begins. So, there is always an overlapping area and also as I just now said that there are social variations in the usage of language that also leads to this kind of, um, this kind of over, overlapping geographical diversity. Uh, <clears throat> then sometimes Dakhani is included in this Akar Bahul, but many scholars place Dakhani separately also. 
because dakani is geographically in a very far remote area which is hyderabad regions now dakani has a, a form which is called urdu also and there is a dakani hindi also now that form may have some similarities with kaurabi and um, and khadi boli and the way language is used in uh, mainly delhi meerut agra regions for the simple reason that historically these have been the two power centers where a lot of exchange from delhi regions delhi and agra regions delhi and its nearby regions have happened between the language of hyderabad regions and language of delhi regions though of course there will be variations between the two but still they both of them can be placed under the akur bahul even though geographically they are very far off and both of them dakhani hindi or dakhani urdu they are identified and distinguished on the basis of the kind of vocabulary which identifies hindi from urdu in terms of daily uses however these two are very close both dakhani urdu and and dakhani hindi are very close and they are spoken in the hyderabad regions the other form of western hindi is okar bahul where in lieu of a the vowel o is often used now this includes mainly braj bundeli and kannauji now braj is spoken in the regions around mathura note that this is also a dialectal overlapping area as this is the area where khadi boli is also used along with khadi boli kaurvi is also used i have just now spoken about that so there are dialectal variations and braj is spoken in that area also so along with braj khadi boli and kaurvi might exist in some areas so this is the linguistic variation that you find on the in the multilingual societies that we have in india in india within the area where hindi is being used now bundeli the next form is close to the bagheli and chatisgarhi in terms of geographical demarcation the areas overlap the borders of uttar pradesh and madhya pradesh where some places chatisgarhi is used some places bagheli is used some places bundeli is used we may find some places where there is, there are languages which overlap with bundeli and bagheli both they are being used so again this language overlap situation as i just said is very normal in the use of any language so bundeli bagheli chatisgarhi there are areas between in them which are overlapping but bundeli is primarily geographically demarcated in the bundelkhand which is the areas overlapping the borders of uttar pradesh and madhya pradesh in modern uh, state divisions kannauj is the next form it is spoken in the district kannauj mainly of course there is a district kannauj in western uttar pradesh with kanpur as the center for this language this is also a dialectically overlapping area as it shares some parts with khadi boli and also with kaurvi both because from kanpur onwards till meerut you will find in aligarh and all these areas you find a language which overlaps kaurvi khadi boli and also kannauji so thus the western hindi has overall six main dialects kaurvi haryanavi dakhani braj bundeli and kannauji and also the eastern hindi has six forms if you include maithili and five main forms if you exclude maithili so today we have seen that how and in what conditions hindi became the raj bhasha the official language of the indian union how different languages initially 14 languages and finally nowadays about 22 languages have been included in the eight schedule and how the schedule 8 got expanded over the years as per the requirements of the situations also we have seen that how central government offices include and use hindi in their administrative functioning and day to day work we have also seen that hindi has many forms we discussed about the khadi boli form the eastern hindi form the rajasthani form and the western hindi form however in in this uh, lecture in this program we discussed mainly the western form the eastern form and the khadi boli forms of hindi in the next lecture on the same topic we will discuss about the rajasthani and pahari forms of hindi which of course include many sub forms as well thank you घर बैठे
सीखे पाए राष्ट्रीय मुक्त विद्यालय शिक्षा संस्थान यानी एन में एडमिशन वो भी एकदम आसान तरीके से जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को होगी समय और धन दोनों की बचत एन से शिक्षा कभी भी कहीं भी शिक्षार्थियों क्या आप जानते हैं एन में एडमिशन लेने का सरल और सुगम तरीका जिससे शिक्षार्थियों को ऑनलाइन प्रवेश लेने में सहूलियत मिलती है एन में प्रवेश की प्रक्रिया पूर्णतया ऑनलाइन है शिक्षार्थी घर बैठे इंटरनेट द्वारा प्रवेश के लिए सबसे पहले एन की वेबसाइट www.nios.ac.in पर लॉगिन करें अपना ईमेल आईडी और पासवर्ड डालकर अपना पंजीकरण करें पंजीकरण के बाद लॉगिन करने पर ऑनलाइन प्रवेश हेतु आवेदन पत्र खुलेगा आवेदन पत्र को निर्देशानुसार भरें और प्रिंट आउट ले इस प्रिंट आउट पर अपनी फोटो संलग्न करें ऑनलाइन प्रवेश के लिए शुल्क हेतु भुगतान के तरीके हैं क्रेडिट कार्ड के द्वारा डेबिट कार्ड के द्वारा राष्ट्रीकृत बैंक के ड्राफ्ट के माध्यम से, जो कि सचिव एन नई दिल्ली या नोएडा के पक्ष में देय हो भरे हुए आवेदन पत्र के साथ साथ डिमांड ड्राफ्ट और संलग्न किए जाने वाले दस्तावेज हैं। जन्म रजिस्ट्रार के जिला कार्यालय से जारी जन्म प्रमाण पत्र की सत्यापित प्रति जिसमें जन्म तिथि अंकित हो पिछले विद्यालय से प्राप्त विद्यालय छोड़ने का प्रमाण पत्र जिसमें आवेदक की जन्म तिथि लिखी हो प्रवेश फॉर्म का प्रिंट आउट एन के संबद्ध क्षेत्र केंद्रों पर 10 दिनों में पहुंच जाना चाहिए अन्यथा उचित दस्तावेज ना लगे होने पर आवेदन फॉर्म रद्द किया जा सकता है प्रवेश प्रक्रिया की पुष्टि होने के बाद शिक्षार्थियों को परिचय पत्र व अध्ययन सामग्री डाक द्वारा तुरंत पहुंचाई जाती है ऑनलाइन प्रवेश एक बहुत ही सुगम और सुविधाजनक प्रवेश प्रणाली है ऑनलाइन ऑन टाइम फॉर सेफ एंड सिक्योर एडमिशन जीवन ये प्रकाशित करने राहों को आलोकित करने हम अपना दीपक स्वयं बने हम अपना रास्ता स्वयं चुने कभी पढ़े हम कहीं पढ़े वे विषय के लोच से 